Hello. Hello. Hey guys, welcome back to another mix slash production rundown. We're going to do things a little bit differently today since there are so many good mix tutorials out there and I'll link a few good ones below. I thought there might be more value for you guys if I went through a few different tracks and explained mixing but also production choices, source tones and everything. So the first track we're going to take a look at is the demo track I did for Get Good Drums when they released their P5 library. So my general approach when doing Doing demos like this is to try and come up with something fresh and maybe a little bit different from what most people who use Get With Drums are going to do with it. And that's for a couple of main reasons. The first one being that I think most creators are going to do a way better job than me, showcasing the metal side of things. And the second one is trying to preserve the fun for me. <laughs> and hopefully that leads to very personal music that offers a different perspective on the product. When it comes to drum library demos, I try to just follow my instinct and write off of the sound of the drums. So I usually try to come up with a pattern that's fun and utilizes a bunch of different shells and cymbals. And that usually snowballs into a full track. So let's first hear the drums by themselves. As you can probably tell, I had a lot of fun just playing around with the whole range of velocities and I just love the way they sample this kit. You get so much detail. As I told you before, I usually come up with one main pattern and just build off of that. And this track started with this pattern. And I immediately thought it would be really cool with a fun bass line with some tapping and everything. Playing with the accent here, and though I was very happy with this bass line, I felt like it needed a little bit more glue and tension throughout the section for which I added this drone, basically, which is a very short sequence. And I use Arturia's Matrix 12 plugin for that. Then I thought it might be cool to give everything an 80s vibe, which is why I added a synth bass, for which I used a very simple patch using the sub oscillator on a Juno style plugin. I also added a few accents with a CS80 and a couple more with Juno 6s. And on the second half of this section, guitars with chorus and flanger. And of course some tambourine and also a kick and snare layer. And with everything together. Then we go into the metal section. I must have used two different mics. Uh, so yeah, basically just doing some phase version on the second mic and adjusting phase and I only have a little bit of EQ on the guitar bus just getting rid of that excess air and controlling the low end so the classic Andy Snip technique and I'm also side chaining the guitar bus using the lead guitar just to make space for it in the middle <laughs> you have a few layers that come up with the lead guitar. Hopefully you can hear that they are nowhere near as perfect and tight as with most modern metal productions, but I like the mistakes and I can just see the HP I lose every time I have to edit anything. For the metal part we have guitars 
left and right pair, layers, left and right, a lead part, also Mellotron chords on the second half. Just to add that sinister touch. And I have a heavily distorted layer for the bass. And it seems like I used the B7K from Neural DSP for this. And just a tiny arpeggio that I filtered using the Arturia tape metal file. That lets me transition into the next part, which is the Latin part, we could say. So we have a left and right pair of guitars. The acoustic guitar. For which I used my chord CAC7, so nylon strings. These two synth basses are just holding a pedal tone, just to add a little bit of tension. And also a lead guitar part, which is played on the nylon string guitar. So that's it for this track. If I remember correctly, it came together fairly quickly, because I mean, the drums did all the work for me. Yeah, you'll see throughout this video that my approach is fairly consistent. I usually go into things with uh, an improv yes and mentality, which means I always welcome every bit of idea that comes up and try to roll with it, which leads to these kind of tracks, which are weird, but fun. Let's move on to track number two. All right, track two. So this one is also a drum library demo, but this time for Mixwave. And this one was the Mike Mangini signature library. So you get the idea, once again trying to use as many kit pieces as possible just to showcase everything. But I must say the mix wave stuff is great, but it's more mix ready rather than a drum set in a box, if that makes sense. I'm usually a bit disappointed with the lower velocities, but that said, it still sounds great and you should check it out. I'm pretty sure I started just with this very, very long feel in the beginning. And I immediately felt like the track was going to be very uplifting and ascending. So I had this idea for crazy keyboard part, which I recorded in MIDI at half speed. And I just added the chords underneath using the State Machine Slow Drift plugin. Then bass, and we have that anthemic Super Mario kind of vibe. So yeah, after the intro, we stay up there, suspended with the the F up top. I played a little bit of keys. And another layer also played on my Behringer Pro 800. On the second half, we need to build up the tension, which is why I added these layers. And this is where the bass and drums start to build up. And of course, my beloved orchestral hits on the one. So it may seem like a lot of guitars, but every time it's just the two mics in front of my cab. The main two guitar riffs, left and right. And this weird sound is a ring modulation. And there are chugs in there, I think. 
just acting as accents. Pretty sure the bass is accenting everything. <laughs> There's a solo there. For this one I used my Reface DX keyboard. And let's see, I have another guitar layer left and right. Chords, yeah. Then we go into the final section using this air lead, which is again the state machine slow drift. And this is basically the dirty loops part with a very heavy side chain. Tambourine, of course. Keys, again, just adding some stabs. Guitars. Yeah, just dropped an octave below for that submarine sound. Yeah, lead parts. Again, these are live takes, so what you see in the video is what you hear. And I think I like the little mistakes and when everything's not perfectly lined up, so I keep all the mistakes in. Uh, yeah, so at the end, I played a little piano layer with my electric piano. And I think there are synth layers. Yeah, the drums are basically a stereo out from the plugin, just adding a tiny bit of preamp distortion with the excellent Ellers channel. Some EQ. Seems like a crazy EQ, but it's just shifting the mid-range around from left and right just to spread things apart. Something I learned from reading interviews about Dirty Loops uh, for their Loopified album, where Henry Glinder says he used to boost the top end a lot to get that sizzle. Brenzian designer on the bass, just to add some smack and control the sustain. Double tap which is excellent just to control and turn the bass into a brick. Chorus layer, basically the same thing, but with a stereo chorus in there. And then filtering out the low end and low mids afterwards. Orc, bus, which are the synths. Weird name for this bus, but uh, I guess. So as you can see, just tiny moves trying to make everything fit. And then synth verse, uh, just again, some inflator, just to add density to the sound. Uh, soothe to... But as you can see, it's barely doing anything. All right, yeah, so I needed the keys to be a little bit spittier. So I'm just cutting the stain. There's nothing really special there. Buses are going into a parallel bus which is a multi-band compressor. So as you can see, it's basically a squashed version of the whole mix and helps add density and detail to the low level things. And then I have all the instrument verses except everything percussive, so not the drums, not the tambourine, going into the a mono bus, again squashed to hell. which is really cool, especially for Instagram. Let's move on to track number three. All right, track three. I think this one is called City Thor. And if I remember correctly, we wrote this part together live on Twitch. Alright, so the track count on this one is a little bit higher than usual. I built this whole track around the part that we recorded together live. Alright, so a little delay and saturation and EQ on this synth part. Then you have synth left and right, which I recorded both in MIDI and audio just to get a string layer.
and I doubled everything with a few pads using, uh, let's see, logic strings, state machine, faded keys, and state machine, faded keys. And since we were doing Thal, I uh, used a virtual bass instrument, Shin's Bass by Submission Audio, which is very, very good. It's basically a Warwick Dolphin, but always in tune. Some distortion using Parallax by Neural DSP. Some EQ, compression and limiting using Submission Audio's double tap. Sidechain just to make space with the bass in the bass, <laughs> ducking every time there's a kick. And I think there are a few guitars, yeah. So I cut all the noise by hand. So I usually record fairly open and just cut the noise by hand if needed, like it was the case here. And yeah, just as usual, mic one, mic two, and just some delay adjustment for phase on the SM57. And mic one, I think it was the, the Aston Stealth. And drums are P5 with the low snare. Alright, so I built everything starting from that. I needed to start the track by announcing that it was going to be a mess. So with chugs. In terms of drum pattern, it's fairly simple, groovy. Very Japanese city pop. I added some percussions using a Logix stock percussion sampler. Tambourine, always. Uh, fun bass line. Keys. Some layers here and there. Lead guitar. So this sound is the twist pedal by Tamco, which is a flanger chorus hybrid. And I also added some keys layers just to add that 80s vibe, CS80 and DX7. And here I just wanted everything to drop ever so slightly just to make space for a lead guitar part. So yeah, playing with dynamics on the guitar and some left and right funky stuff. Halfway there, we add strings, then keys. And here we're just floating away in a dream we have since. and a bunch of guitar layers, just creating a huge pad. So flanger going into a chorus, going into an EQ, so basically a bandpass, some delay and some side chaining so that everything pumps with the kicks. Arpeggio just building up the tension up until the next part. And yeah, I cut most of the instruments on that snare hit just to get more impact than we have the drop. This is one of the rare instances where you'll see this many plugins on my mix bus, but that's because I needed this mix to sound very modern, so way more compressed than what I'm used to. So first, the compressor, which ducks the whole mix when there are snare hits, and then the major from Ozone. And I use this one mainly to control the low end and put everything below 60 hertz dead center. EQ, it looks crazy, but it's just shifting the mid-range around just to create some width. And then max bass just to add some density in the low mids and to make sure the bass can be heard on a tiny phone speaker. And then API 2500, I unlinked left and right completely for this mix. So there is potential for chaos going from left and right and everything, but I'm not really too worried about that because 
everything that's sub heavy and has a lot of low end is dead center in the mix, so it should be fine. And then again with the width trick, I think I stole this one from Alco from Tesseract, one of his URM videos. So adding just one dB on the sides at 800, then distorting the sides slightly for everything above 300, some tape saturation above 250 Hz, then the SSLG bus compressor but in mid side. Just controlling the dynamics, squashing everything, then Reviver by Black Salt Audio. So this is basically a multiband transient designer and saturation harmonic distortion. So adds a little bit of separation and punch in the low end. And that flatline too for loudness. So yeah, we're reaching about minus six. And finally, Ozone Maximizer in IRC3 balance mode. And I think that's it. Uh, let's quickly see one last track together. All right, track four. So this one is the demo track I did for the Tamco Twist pedal. This one. And it's basically a chorus flanger hybrid, which clearly informed my musical decisions in this track. Uh, so as you can see, there's a tempo change, very gradual towards the end. Yeah, before we start, if you haven't seen the video, this is the track. Alright, so as usual, the track goes in many directions at the same time, but the idea was to use this pedal on anything I could. So the beginning, I used it on, uh, let's see, the guitar. On synths, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. On the center guitar. On these. On the lead guitar too, on layers, on the bass, and also on drums. So yeah, just trying to come up with fun ways you can use a pedal. Many of you were a bit surprised to see so many clap tracks, but it's not really that much considering I'm trying to recreate the effects of a bunch of people clapping their hands together in the room. So it's just me going around the room and recording from different places. Adding some reverb helps a little, but yeah, you really need all those layers. And the rest is basically pairs, shakers left and right, cowbells left and right, and woodblock left and right. I don't quantize these, I think you tend to lose the little bit of human groove in there if you do. And for the drums, I used P5 again. So yeah, the usual playing around with dynamics, adding details on the hats, uh, just having fun. Uh, and then we have this huge 
ground fill that leads into the epic part. And yeah, I really, really like doing these Latin inspired two hander accents where you push against the click, just holding everything a little bit back. Going into, into the next part. Starting from the beginning, so we have bass, the chords played on the nylon string guitar. And then center guitar, but using the piezo pickup into the pedal. Synth layer. The Strawberry Ocarina solo. But yeah, with a little bit of reverb and delay. And for this... That's basically just a pitch glide on my Behringer Pro 800 that leads us into the next section. I think I have guitar layers. Yeah. Then we go into the funky part. Synths, left and right, for the chords. And yeah, I really like to do these blanks, just adding a bit of tension when I introduce new parts and that need to be the focus. In this case, it's the lead guitar. But as you can see, I'm dropping everything just to let the lead guitar shine in the middle and then reintroduce everything on the beat. Like a DJ. Lead part. It's the first phase going into the twist pedal. Again, what you see in the video is what you hear here. Uh, here, here. It's live with all the flubs and yeah, just a tiny bit of EQ compression just to make the solo a bit more in your face. And reverb, which is automated just to make the last part a bit wider and washier to make the transition. Again, for the transition, pitch glide. Orchestral hits. I love those. And then we have the the audience choir by Jacob Collier, which is free, by the way. And what I really, really like about this plugin are the different tunings you have. So I made them extra bright using EQ. Just because I already have distorted guitars and bass occupying this low mid mid register and i also have a third instance of the audience choir but using the stumps the claps the yeah And just one final detail, there's a guitar in the center. And the guitar tone is always the same thing, so very little EQ. I think I control the low end, add it just a little bit of high end, and control the, the honky mids. Apart from that, it's straight into my Mesa quad preamp. Which goes into my custom Hesu vertical 2x12, which is loaded with a Hesu Demon on top and a cream back at the bottom. And the top mic is an Aston Stealth in V1 mode, and the bottom mic is an SM57. And the mix bus is what I've more or less settled on lately. So Compressor, ducking when the snare hits. Imager, controlling the low end. EQ, bus compressor, width, 
using a mid side EQ and mid side saturation, Saturn 2 and flatline. So yeah, nothing crazy, we're hitting around minus 6 on the loudest parts, but yeah. So it's loud, but not too crispy, which is what I'm aiming for. And that's basically it! Yay! Alright, so we've taken a look at four different tracks with a bunch of different styles and instruments in there. So the main takeaway is that I like to commit to sounds right at the source, so if I want a chorus, fuzz, distortion, a delay on my guitars, I'll just click on the pedal. So most of my musical ideas come paired with a specific sound that I like to record on the way in with. Uh, that way I'm not second guessing myself constantly and I'm just marching on, which makes the process really fast and efficient. The downside to that being that recalls are virtually impossible, because the mics are always going to move in front of my cab, I'm always going to tweak the settings on my pedals, so unless I take pictures and everything, I'm not really able to match the tones afterwards. Even that isn't really a downside for me, because I like the idea of never having the same sound twice in a row. That's why I'm using tube amps and pedals, they're inconsistent, they're noisy, but the quirks add to the charm. For me. Hopefully you also get a sense of how little post-processing I do except for maybe drums and some virtual instruments. All the rest, if the tone isn't really what I'm looking for, I'm, I'd rather move the mic, tweak the settings and just record that way. I'm fairly sure I'll have missed something you wanted to know, so if you have any question, be it mix related, gear related, anything really, just ask me in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer. And if the same question pops up a few times, I'll just do a dedicated video on it. In the meantime, I hope you got something from this video that it inspired you, that it made you excited to play music. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Until then, have an amazing day, week, night. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.